let's go straight to our feature on the show today. The National Bureau of Statistics says the Nigerian employment rate rose to 27.1% in the second quarter of 2020 from 23.1% recorded in uh, the third quarter of 2018. The NBS in its labor force unemployment and underemployment report says after 20 months interval, the nation's underemployment rate increased from 20.1% in quarter 3 2018 to 28.6% in quarter 2 of 2020. The report also shows that for the period under review in the second quarter of 2020, the unemployment rate of young people aged 15 to 34 years is 34.9%, up from 29.7%, while the rates of underemployment for the same age group rose to 28.2% from 25.7% in Q3 2018, adding that the rates are the highest when compared to other age groupings. NBS further said the number of persons in the uh, economically active or working age population between 15 and 64 years of age increased to 116871186 from 115492969 in quarter three of 2018. According to the statistics office, the total number of people in employment in quarter two 2020 fell by 15.8%. 5272276 compared to quarter three of 2018. Joining me now to translate the breakdown of these figures and the impact on the economy in short, middle, and long term is Mr. Taiwo Oyedele. He's a West Africa tax leader with Price Waterhouse Coopers. Thank you very much for your time, Mr. Taiwo. Thank you for having me. Uh, first, how does this figure come to you? Were you expecting it? Was it supposed to be more than this? Are we already having the effect of COVID-19 on the unemployment figures? I think it's a three-in-one question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think it's important to say these figures relate to Q2 of 2020, which means up until the end of June. And the comparative figures that we are comparing these weeks and in respect of Q3 of 2018. Uh, so that's almost two years uh, since we had the last data around unemployment. Um, so to a very large extent, therefore, uh, these numbers already incorporate the impact of COVID-19 uh, pandemic, particularly from the economic side. The numbers are they what I expect. Um, so the numbers are very alarming, uh, but not surprising. So unfortunately now the unemployment rate plus the underemployment rate, by the way, the underemployment is people who work uh, less than 40 hours a week. Um, so those people are considered to be underemployed if they work between 20 to 39 hours a week. For those who work less than 20 hours a week, uh, they are considered to be unemployed. So if you take the fact that in Nigeria, we do not have a uh, social safety net, so which means when you are employed, um, you take care of yourself. When you become unemployed, you are completely on your own. You don't get the support from the state or from the government, if I may put it differently. Therefore, you can easily add up the underemployment plus the unemployment and the rate is easily more than 55%. Uh, and it's even more worrying because the percentage of unemployed people is highest among young people who are aged between 15 and 34 years. Uh, if you also further disaggregate it, you find out that actually, uh, you know, people with degree and qualification from higher institution, you know, degree BSc, HND, uh, at the second, they have the second highest unemployment. Uh, so this is very worrying. Uh, so you have a lot of young people, you have people who are educated, but they are not engaged in doing productive activities. So this is, uh, you know, a cause for a lot of concerns for everyone who is interested in Nigeria and the future of this country. Indeed, when you talk about uh, this, this calls for uh, everyone's concern, we're looking at uh, a figure that exceeds 
35 of 54 African countries that's talking about our unemployment uh, figures in this part of the world. Now, what could be done? Because now, the way it looks, COVID-19 has also come with its negative effect. So, uh, with COVID-19, where do you see us stand with regards to unemployment figures? And what are the, well, should we say short, medium, long, like we said, uh, ways out of all of this? Yeah, I think even before trying to think about what should we do, we need to better understand what the problem is. Mm. Uh, so the problem is that in terms of the standard of living, in terms of the quality of lives, in terms of you know prosperity and everything that people desire, uh, employment or unemployment play a significant role in that. Uh, so whether you're talking about poverty, and by the way we have... A lot of our people, uh, millions of our people are living in multidimensional uh, poverty. Uh, so they can't even afford basic needs. Uh, so the NBS, uh, Office of Statistics, uh, conducted a study also recently about the impact of COVID-19. And they found out that uh, almost one in four households, that's about 24% of Nigerians, can't even afford soap and water. So we keep saying, wash your hands, use so, mm. but we have 24% of Nigerian household who cannot afford so. Uh, so that in itself shows you the extent of poverty. And because of COVID-19, this has now further increased. And if you think about it from the dimension of uh, mystery index, which is essentially the addition of unemployment plus inflation rate, because the inflation data also released just a couple of days ago shows that inflation is now at about 12.82%. So it's gone up again. So if you sum up the un unemployment plus uh, inflation rates, you easily have mystery index of about 40%. If you add on that employment to that, you're easily talking about close to 69%. So this will make Nigeria one of the most miserable countries in the world, clearly in the top 10, not only in Africa. And so what does this mean? So there's a correlation between uh, mystery index and crime. Uh, because when people are unemployed and prices of those services are rising and they cannot afford them, then they tend to take to crime, particularly uh, because these people that are mostly unemployed are young people who have so much energy and they're looking for productive means where to apply them. So all of these means that we have to take a national approach we have to take a holistic approach. We have to take a strategic approach towards creating employment, doing fully well, that we need to be able to create employment, to be able to bring down crime rates, to be able to uh, bring about economic um, and, uh, development and raise the standard of living uh, for people. The average size of a household in Nigeria is about six, so which means for every person who loses their employment, most likely you're talking about additional five people uh, who are depending on them and can no longer find uh, how to take care of themselves. You know, some reports have it that Nigeria is number one in the world in terms of the percentage of the household income that we spend on food, and that's about 60%. So uh, also the inflation numbers that were released recently showed that we've seen increases in the price of food. Uh, food inflation is very high. Uh, so you have increases in the prices of, of yam, of potato, of cereal, of bread, fish, meat, uh, and these are the things people need to consume just to stay alive. So in trying to address it to your question about what should we be doing, uh, I think we have to first realize that governments cannot create employment uh, that will make a dent in our unemployment numbers. We also need to recognize that the white collar jobs working in a bank, oil company, telecommunication will not solve this problem. In fact, all the banks in Nigeria combined employ less than 200,000 people. That's a drop in the ocean in terms of the numbers we are looking at. So the key to Nigeria's employment uh, falls within the MSME sector. So you have over 40 million MSMEs. Imagine you empower them and you create the right environment, and half of them just employ one more person, then you, you'll be able to move the needle and get our unemployment numbers to the level where they should be. So government has to provide the enabling environment. It's not every time that 
people are struggling to survive, government will say, how should we tax them? We need to start thinking about how do we use this as a platform to solve a national problem, which is how do you create employment for your people? I mean, Mr. it sounds interesting, but when we talk about public private partnership now coming in. Uh, are we talking about the environment, creating an enabling environment for private sector to be able to create these jobs? Government needs to just pull out. We see some efforts by government. We see programs, a lot of programs being designed uh, just to also help address unemployment. What's your assessment of some of these programs? Let's look at them too uh, before we now look into uh, public-private partnership, which I totally agree to that that's the way to go. Yeah, yeah, you're right, indeed. Uh, so you see a lot of efforts and initiatives here and there, but I'll say those efforts are disconnected and disjointed. You need to find a way to connect the dots. If one uh, level of government or one agency of government is trying to provide funds because they want to address the issue of access to credit for small businesses, and another agency of government is looking for how to increase the levies and the fees and the licenses, costs that they pay, uh, or you find some uh, in law enforcement, you know, stopping people on the road or saying you cannot put your sign post here, or they tell you how to get 15 different approvals just to open a small shop to any living. So the idea is that first and foremost, we need a coordinated approach. What is it that we want to do with small businesses? We need to ensure that regulations and rules and laws and inspections and whatever it is. Sometimes to even just get approval, say from NAFDA, it's difficult. So I'm not saying we should lower the standards, but we need to be able to help small businesses to do legitimate businesses without being frustrated. You know, I'll use the analogy of if you take a fish and you ask it to run on, on, on dry, dry land and you pray for it to, to succeed, even if it was racing against a snail, it, it cannot succeed because that environment is not conducive for it. It has to be in the water. And when it's in the water, make sure the water is not polluted. So creating a conducive environment means we need to think about the ecosystem of how small businesses operate. From the ability to access capital, access to training, to do what they do, dealing with regulation, paying taxes, the tax rate, dealing with importation, clearing, custom, logistics. So there's a lot that goes into it. And every country around the world, you find that the biggest employer of labor are the small, uh, are the SMEs. So this is even more critical than the public-private partnership, which is also important, but that's usually more at a bigger, higher level. Of maybe you're trying to build an infrastructure yeah. and so on and so forth. In, indeed. I'm also worried, as we all know, many have said, even the finance minister was out to say last week that, well, we might be heading for a recession. Uh, UK is in a recession, uh, so I, I don't see how we're just trying our best to be able to waggle our way out of all of this. Now, what do you make if that now happens to the Nigerian economy? What figures are we going to be looking at? I'm concerned here about inflation, uh, foreign exchange uh, market, and Unemployment, which we're talking about. Mm. Yeah, I, I think we are probably already in, in recession. It's just that if you go by the technical <laughs> definition of technical a recession, recession. You need to, yeah, you need two consecutive quarters of negative uh, GDP, GDP uh, growth, which hasn't happened yet because we only have the data for Q1, and it was about 1.85% uh, plus. So, but the reality is that if you get the data for June, which is Q2, chances are that we're already in the negative. And so the individual Nigerians and households, particularly those who have lost their employment, they're already in recession. They don't care about what the technical definitions are. So what we need to do is to ensure what can we do now to make sure that we start the recovery sooner rather than later? How can we get people back to work? Over 10 million people have lost their jobs, right? How do we make them gainfully employed so they can be productive, take care of themselves, their family, families, and contribute to national development. So that's the conversation we should be having. And I think a lot of it is government has to, you know, apply itself towards creating the right environment rather than hoping to create the direct employment. They do not have the capacity. They cannot do it. They just need to facilitate 
particularly if you look at the GDP numbers, the Q1, that which is the latest we have, you see a lot of the sectors that are heavy in labor, labor intensive, uh, are the ones that are not growing. So you need to spur and stimulate growth in those mm. sectors that are labor intensive. That's how you solve the problem around unemployment. Mr. Tawo Yedili, I must thank you for your time. West African tax leader with PricewaterhouseCoopers. It's always a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you for having me.